You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Most options trading platforms are commission-free, and there are some that don't charge per contract fees. Public.com goes a step further. When you trade options on public, there are no commissions, no per contract fees, and you get a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. That means it costs less than zero dollars per transaction. In other words, instead of paying to place options trades, you literally earn money, and that money can add up fast. If you trade 1,000 option contracts on public, you'll earn up to $180 in rebates. 10,000 contracts? Up to almost $1,200. It's pretty obvious why NerdWallet recently gave options trading on public 5 out of 5 stars. Because public really stands out for the cost of its options trades. Their words, not ours. If you want to start paying less than $0 to trade options, check out public.com and get a rebate of up to $0.18 cents per contract traded. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It's Education Wednesday. Time to talk a little bit of options. Yes, it is time once again for Options Boot Camp, the premier options educational program. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks are main line in these days hope you're having a good trading week out there as we're recording this listener i know a lot of you come in way down the road so this will be in the past for you but we are recording this on the day of nvidia's earnings here in the year 2024 may so a lot on the docket out there a lot of people are just waiting and seeing these days they're all saying it's nvidia's market and we are all just living in. If you're coming from the future, listeners, are you laughing at that? Is that ridiculous? Did NVIDIA just uh, screw the pooch and just go, to, go south? Did this whole AI boom become a bust? Write to us from the future. Hit us up. <laughs> Let us know. Of course, uh, if you want to check out anything else on the network, and you should be, make sure you're subscribing to the full network on wherever you get this. I know more and more of you coming in via the tubes these days or other platforms. It's even on Audible. You name it. You tell your smart speaker you want to listen to it. Bootcamp is available wherever options content and indeed audio content is available on whatever platform you like. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to join us for some awesome pro Q&As. Just had an awesome one delving into all aspects of volatility with our buddy, Mr. Vixologist, a.k.a. Mr. Jim Carroll. Been on Vol Views many times. Tackling a bunch of questions about all those Vol ETPs. We've talked about a few times here on this show. A little bit of advanced stuff, so I know a lot of you really responded and resonated to that, in which case I encourage you, uh, check it out over there on the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, UVIX, SVIX, you know, all that kind of stuff. VIX itself, VXX, you name it. We got into all that fun. 
Why is it so hard to make money on VIX calls? <laughs> we talked about that and much more on the Pro Q&A. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more as we learn who's joining us on the old program today. I am pleased to welcome on once again the black-hatted one himself. The day drinker extraordinaire, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show. How goes the day drinking, sir? Uh, hey, folks, how are you? No, there is no day drinking for me. I definitely like to uh, throw some back at night, but uh, I just can't do it. It makes me tired. It makes me fall asleep. So you abstain on NVIDIA earnings day. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, unfortunately. I probably should, but, you know. <laughs> Are you a believer in this kind of newly minted market holiday, Dan, that it's uh, NVIDIA's market, we're all just living in it, and this trumps Fed Day, this trumps everything else? Are you a buyer of what they're selling there, sir? Well, not entirely. I mean, it, it is very important. Um, I mean, I think AI is is definitely a very defining moment in not just the market, but society. Um so, yeah, I mean, it's important. It's important. And you know what else is important, listeners? A little bit of the old. Ooh, got the live turning on. There we go. That's the live stream that our pro members are listening to right now, listeners. <laughs> Some reason it decided to intrude on me right now. But we'll turn that down. There we go. Uh, but you know what else is important, listeners? It's a little bit of the old basic training. So let's get to it. All right, Boot, it's time to get live. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Call in. Print bear to learn. Yes, sir. All right, listeners, for part one of this special double header extravaganza. Yes, Dan is traveling next week, so no live boot camp next week. But if you're listening on the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, you're going to get it all in your ear holes today, post haste. No waiting, no rest for the wicked over there. But Mr. Dan, an intriguing topic for today's basic training was suggested actually by a listener. Now, this listener, as we have established, has dubious taste because he did say he was a fan of yours. This was OP Surfer, I believe. He, he requested a variety of topics for the show. Uh, but one of them kind of resonated with me because he mentioned some of the some of the topics he would like us to discuss. He was focusing on trading them within an IRA. And it got me thinking, you know, that is such an enormous use case for so many of the listeners of this show. A lot of them are doing their options trading pretty much exclusively in IRAs or at the very least the lion's share of it in IRAs. And yet, Dan, this is a topic that uh, we haven't touched on in a while. Go ahead, Dan. No cheating. Take a guess. When was the last time we did an episode focused all around trading options in an IRA, sir? Oh, geez, man. Um, <clears throat> it had to be a long time ago. I mean, I can't even remember. What is this, 24? It had to be before the year 2000, I would say. I would say 2019. Before the year 2000. I, I don't think we were podcasting oh. back then. <laughs> oh, shit. 2020. Oh, my God. I'm our our, my our network here. goes back a ways. We don't go Holy quite back God. that far, sir. I don't think podcasts go back to the year, <laughs> to year 2000, <laughs> but uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to explore. It, it does require an iPod, after all, hence the pod. All <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, no, not 2000. It. But uh, you said 2020. Actually, it was March 26th. Of 2015, sir, episode 55. We're going all the way back to episode 55. It was myself and you and our good buddy, Mr. Uncle Mike, joining us for a special guest episode talking about oh, uh, called Going Naked in IRA, sir. Ring a bell at all? You know, what rings a bell is that he still owes me $2, but... <laughs> um, that was, you know, was it the okay. 2020 election or was it 2016? I forgot. Uh, 2020. Okay. Yeah, 2020. So yeah, with interest, that's got to be about a million dollars now, I think, right? Yeah, it's inflation, man. I mean, you know? this inflation is a beast. Uh, but yes, a long way around, listeners, to saying we have not talked about IRA specifically on this show in quite some time. If you are intrigued by this topic, I'm sure a lot of you are, I heartily encourage you after, after of course, you listen to this episode. You go back and check out episode 25. It was from March of 2015. So you may have to scroll back away. Some of your podcast platforms may limit you to the most recent 50 episodes, in which case you can go to our website, go to our app. It'll all be there 
for you there as well. And also, a little bonus, we did talk about it one other time, episode 25. So now you're going back to the primordial ooze days, Dan, of July of 2013. Not quite to 2000, but we're getting closer, 2013. (laughs) Crazy. That was called Using Options in Retirement Accounts. So we did it twice in the span of two years, (laughs) and that was it, Dan, never again. (laughs) Wow. So our listener had a good suggestion for this topic. So I think it is time to revisit this. We all know, just looking at the data, so many new listeners just in the last few years and indeed few months, let alone going back to 2015. So this is going to be new to a lot of you. Uh, So let's get to it. By the way, that listener, OP Surfer, also requested a topic. He called it a special guest topic for retail traders creating personal income. What are the best Excuse me, what are the most important tax implications to know and navigate? What are the best practices to minimize tax losses? And are there benefits to establishing trust or LLCs, et cetera? Excellent question. Neither Dan nor I are tax professionals. So the, the tax implications of trusts versus LLCs, not exactly in our bailiwick. You do point that out as a special guest topic. So we will investigate perhaps bringing on a special guest for that. I mean, we've avoided taxes because it isn't the sexiest of things after all, but it is important at the end of the day. So perhaps it could be something we could investigate for a future episode. Unless, Dan, you're you're hiding some hidden tax depths I'm unaware of. Uh, no, man. I, I have an accountant to do my taxes. Uh, and it's not something I, I have any expertise in. <laughs> so, yeah, neither Dan nor I are going to be making a trust or LLC recommendations, I don't think. But we can talk, Dan, in depth about IRAs. Uh, before I even start, before I get into some examples of things, when I say the word to you, IRA, and indeed trading options in an IRA, what comes to mind? Me? Um, well, I mean, usually what comes to mind is using options for investing strategies. So things like covered calls, cash secured puts, you know, the whole wheel thing, Um, you know, sometimes long calls as a substitution strategy, stock repair strategy, these things. Yeah. Investment oriented stuff. That's a good way to term it, listeners, investment oriented, because it is an IRA. So these are, of course, retirement accounts. So you can't do everything. You can do a lot of things. There's a misperception out there that IRAs are extremely limited in terms of their trading options, pun intended. But the truth is you actually can do, I would say, most of what you want to do from an options perspective with a few caveats. And we are here to lay those out for you today. A couple of kind of basic prohibitions when you're looking at an IRA. First off, you can't buy stock on margin. So, of course, you can't go in and put in less capital than you want to buy the underlying, buy the rest on margin. The other side of that, selling stock short. So going in, you see a stock, it's overvalued. I want to just short the heck out of that. Also a no-no in IRA. And for our purposes, we're talking at it from an options perspective. That prohibition really extends to selling naked short options. Now, if you've been a any time listener of this show, a few months, a few years, a decade, you know Dan and I not exactly huge fans of just crazy naked short options. Uh, he probably had it beaten to his head. I know I did when I was a market maker. Don't be net short units. And what that means is don't have a lot of net short risk in any direction. So if the unforeseen happens, you don't want to get wiped out. You want to live to fight another day. So not being net short units is the way to avoid that at the end of the day. So they have prohibitions on being net short units effectively in an IRA. So you can't come out and do, again, strategies Dan and I don't really like anyway. <laughs> so you can't come out, for example, see GameStop or whatever, pick your meme stock of choice, FFIE last week, and say, you know, this thing's way too overvalued. I'm just going to sell a call on it and just ride it into oblivion. Cannot do that in an IRA. That would be a naked net short position. You would have to have something else against it, whether a long call, so it's now a vertical, or a stock position, so now it's a covered call. So that is the main prohibition you really need to wrap your head around when you're talking about selling options. Now, what about you might say, well, what about selling a put? Can I sell a put naked? 
Not really. It kind of depends what you mean by naked. If by naked you mean having all the cash in your account to buy the stock in case the stock is put to you, then yes, you can sell naked all day long. Most people don't consider that to be a naked put. Most people consider that to be a cash secured put, which is a contentious term in and of itself. Some people think we shouldn't use that term because it implies more perhaps safety than there is in that position. But that said, if you're going to sell a put, any put selling you're going to do in an IRA, you're going to have the capital to back it up. That's a requirement. So put selling in an IRA, it is a capital intensive thing. So something to bear in mind. So from an options perspective, those are the main prohibitions you really need to be aware of. Nothing with any sort of net short unit. So that, of course, is the obvious, the naked short call or indeed the naked short put. If you're going to sell a put, you're going to need to have the capital in your account to buy the stock. So prepare to set aside some cash and maybe some other strategies that are tricky net short units could be a problem as well. Maybe you're doing a butterfly and instead of going long one, short two and long one again, you want to get a little tricky with it. Maybe you want to go long one, short three and then long one, you know? That would be obviously net one short unit at the end of the day. They're going to frown upon that. Or any sort of ratio spread where you're long one call, let's say, and short two, three, a million out of the money calls against it. Net short units again, they're going to frown upon that in an IRA. Dan, those are some of the prohibitions that came to mind for me. No net short units at the end of the day. And having the capital in your account when you want to sell a put. What else leaps to mind for you when it comes to prohibitions or maybe things you shouldn't do in an IRA? Well, I mean, people have different reasons for IRAs. The reason why they were initially set up was to save money for retirement, which I feel like most people use them for that reason. So, I mean, this is not a prohibition, but I would say if you are using it for that reason and not just to trade without you know, while deferring taxes for some other reason, you got to be really conservative. I mean, if you're a typical person who you work, you save money, you squirrel it away and hope that it goes up as the market goes up, like you don't want to mess around with it. You want to, you want to, um, you want to stick to the more conservative strategies and reduce limiting strategies. So again, not really a prohibition, but I would say certainly a good piece of guidance, I'd hope. We have a good question coming in from our live chat from Mr. Nichols with the Z. He says, can I do calendars in an IRA? Uh, good question. Let's get to some of the strategies you can do now, Dan, in an IRA. Enough of talking to the negatives, huh, Dan? Let's get to some of the positives, some of the pros you have. Yeah. Obviously, uh, obviously, the lack of taxes is a good pro, at least the deferred taxes in an IRA. So again, going back to taxes, that's a big one. That's a big pro of trading in an IRA. Uh, but outside of those strategies, we kind of just outlined, you can really do most of the other strategies you can think of. So obviously covered calls is a big one. A lot of people love doing those. I would say that's one of the primary options, use cases in an IRA. Stock, call against it, getting some income, getting some capital appreciation from the stock. It's, it's a win-win in an IRA. Collars, obviously also long put, short call against an underlying position. Again, very well suited to an IRA position. I've joked about that on our advisor's options show in the past. That is the holy grail options position for financial advisors and a popular one to use in IRA accounts. Verticals, any kind of verticals you want. So you're talking debits, you're talking credit spreads. You could do all those in an IRA. Butterflies, again, as long as you don't get crazy with the construction, like I just laid out where you're net short a ton of units, you can do them. You know, your iron condors, stock substitution, also, I would think, a, a popular use case for the option savvy in an IRA. Of course, swapping out the underlying for a long-term stock position. I would say the caveat being Brian Overby's favorite, the fig leaf, because you're selling a short call and not against anything. That's why it's called the fig leaf. You're only partially covered. You have a long-term in-the-money call position. Then you have a short out-of-the-money call position, near-dated call against that. It's up to the broker how they choose to margin that. And some brokers might be a little less savvy than others. And they may freak out against that 
short call and may not consider that to be offset by the long term call. So I would I would tread carefully on the on the fig leaf portion of the stock substitution. Maybe contact your broker and ask them, hey, can I? How do you treat this from a margin perspective? Because at the end of the day, it's not really covered. You don't have the stock to be called away. There is a process. You'll have to either exercise that long term call or get yourself some stock or close out the position so that it's not exactly covered. So bear that in mind on the fig leaf. Now getting to Nichols question calendars. Dan, I'm, I'm curious. What are your thoughts on this? Calendars in an IRA. Technically, the answer should be yes. Right. But what is your experience been if, you, if you've talked to people doing this? Uh, yeah, technically, the answer should be yes. And as much as I say stick to the conservative investment-oriented strategies in an IRA, yeah, I mean, a, a couple option trades, especially if well well thought out and um, conservative and, and, you know, you do have a solid plan, are okay. So, I mean, I would be okay with it as well, um, occasionally. Calendars are the strategy, Dan. I always call them a 201 or a 301. They always test the metal of an options broker, really how savvy they are. Can they handle calendars? Do they margin them effectively? Do they not freak out when you try to enter them? Do they even have them in the drop down to enter them as a choice? <laughs> uh, so you see a lot of brokers out there soliciting funds for IRAs. Hey, come transfer X amount of dollars to us for your IRA and we'll give you some matching deposit or whatever. Not all those brokers are very option savvy. They just want your capital at the end of the day. So that's why I, I throw a little bit of a caveat out there with things like the fig leaf or even the calendar. Things that require the broker to be a little bit more option savvy. You and I listening to this show, you know, okay, calendar, it's not really a massive risk position out there. It should be okay. You know, you're not net short any units. You have the long position, you have the short position offsetting. Some brokers may balk a little bit at that. So if you're using a less options savvy broker, just maybe be prepared for an issue getting your calendars off out there. So I, I would say Nichols, definitely check with your broker where you have your IRA. And if they don't allow it or if they have issues with it or they somehow margin it onerously, then it's definitely worth looking at other brokers, especially if calendars are a big part of your trading arsenal. Also worth noting, you know, the, the traditional choice of traditional IRA versus Roth. That's a tax thing. Doesn't make any difference from a option strategies that you can execute perspective. So Dan, we talked about the basics, what you can do, what you can't do. Anything else you want to add on this? Apparently it's on our docket for once a decade revisit to all things IRAs and options, Dan. <laughs> um, boy, uh, geez, I, I should really uh, have something profound to say since this is the last time we'll talk about it for the next 10 years. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess that's everything that I got. Um, you know, for people who do want to be more aggressive and and you don't have to worry about necessarily using that as a retirement account, maybe you have a 401k or something. And you're good at trading, and you might end up accruing a lot of uh, a, a lot of a tax burden. I mean, it can be useful as a trading account as well. I, I like I said, I don't use it for that, but it can be useful to be a little bit more active too. I guess. All right, listeners. Now it's time to unleash the beast. It is time for the mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call. But before we get to you folks out there on the show, it is time, listeners, to unleash the true beast that is the market taker question of the week. And now, it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the Market Taker Question of the Week. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dan, I know you sent over new music. They're going to swap it in. We had to get one last logins in, <laughs> just for old time's sake. You know, it just warms the cockles of the old heart. It's, it's not a show without a little bit of the logins. I think you would agree. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, okay, so... 
I was just talking with with one of our student traders about this, and uh, it's actually going to be in my daily video later. But uh, hey, I'll let you guys in on it too. Um, I've been doing a lot with zero day options, <clears throat> and um, one of the scanners that I'm testing out has SPY options, SPX options, IWM, NDX. Uh, so the the guy said, hey, you know, I only trade ETF options, not index options. So I was like, well, how come? He said, well, you know, because I don't really understand index options at this point. I said, well, that's a that's a good reason not to not to trade them. But it made me think that maybe it is something that all traders should explore. Because index options can uh, index options do have certain advantages. They have some detriments too, but they have certain advantages. Like, for example, one is there could be beneficial tax consequences. Again, not a tax professional. Talk to your accountant, do your own research, but some of them can have pretty good tax consequences. Uh, different sizing, like for example, SPX is 10 times the size of SPY, or I should really say SPY is, is 10% the size of SPX because SPX is full value uh, S&P 500. So therefore you can trade nine fewer options um, <laughs> instead of, you know, instead of 10 SPY options, you can trade one SPX and therefore save on commissions. Uh, another thing could be the settlement process. First of all, SPX, if we're just sticking to that, are um, they're cash settled. So if you get assigned, you're never going to end up with the underlying. Uh, you just pay or get the in the money value when there's an assignment or exercise, which the fourth thing is assignment or exercise only happens on expiration day because they're European style. So in that regard, there's no surprises. So those are some of the advantages of index options. Again, there's uh, disadvantages as well. But hey, that can be a talk for another question of the week. That it can, sir. But let's get out to our own questions of the week. Last week, we asked you listeners, do you think we'll have zero day options listed in Tesla, NVIDIA and Apple before the end of the year? Yes, no, or you don't trade zero day. And Dan, our listeners, usually they are the ultimate arbiters for all these questions. Uh, they could not make up their minds last week. 37% each <laughs> for Tesla, NVIDIA and Apple before the end of the year. 25.9%. Uh, for they don't trade zero DT. We also have the one about about the Bitcoin ETF option. I'll have to go dig and see if we can find the results for that one. But our actual question of the week this week, Dan, is uh, along the lines of what I was talking about earlier. It is the day, listeners. It is NVIDIA earnings day. Some say it's NVIDIA's market. We're all just living in it. At the beginning of the week, the at the money straddle Dan in NVIDIA was trading for approximately $78.00. That's about $10 more than the stock has averaged in terms of movement after its most recent announcements out there. So we, we crunched that data. Our buddy, Mr. Matt from Orats, crunches it all for us. Uh, so we have a track record going back a long way with all these names, including NVIDIA. So we thought we would ask you folks, $78, 10 bucks more than the average movement of late. Is that too expensive, too cheap, or is it just right, Dan? Or do you think our audience... They're just staying the hell away from NVIDIA, sir. Dan, if you have a vote, have at it. Where do you think our audience is lining up? Well, I mean, this is something that I look at all the time. And um, if, if as a percentage of the stock now, so here, actually, you know what? Hold on a second. I, let, 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 me, let me just pull something up really quick, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, that one. And uh, this one, <laughs> okay, so uh, NVIDIA, $78 straddle divided by 934, 934, that's, that's an 8.4% move. I mean, what I like to look at on earnings is just the opening gap from yesterday's close to today's open. 
So not a 24 hour trade. I mean, really just a closing rotation, opening rotation trade, a zero minute trade. If you don't count the hours, the markets closed. So it's pretty crazy looking at the opening gaps from the past two years. Last quarter was 11.2%. The quarter before that was 0.2%. Quarter before that was 6.6%. Quarter before that was 26.1%. So those are the ones to me for earnings trading that I avoid where there's a volatility among the data for the opening gaps. Because I mean, like if it always gaps 20% or something and you can buy the straddle for 8%, I mean, by all means, buy that straddle. But in this case, sometimes you just kill it and sometimes you would just get killed. So there's just too much volatility among the opening gap data for the past couple of years. Um, so for me, my vote is not touching NVIDIA for earnings with a 10-foot pole. Our audience agrees with you, Dan. 47.4% right now saying they are not going near it. 31.6% uh, saying 78 bucks, a little bit too rich for their blood. They don't want to buy it. And then we have a tie for $78 is too cheap. And also it's just right with 10.5% each. So our audience, unlike last week, they can make up their minds this week, Dan. And they don't want to touch NVIDIA with a 10-foot pole, get over there at options. Make your voice heard, not just on this, listeners, but for all of you listening months, weeks, years down the road. Head on over to at options and make your voice heard on all of our questions of the week. All right, it's going to do it for this episode of Options Bootcamp, our once-in-a-decade IRA revisitation episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like trading options on IRAs, I encourage you. Uh, check out some of those other episodes I mentioned earlier in the show. But, Mr. Dan, before we go, if folks want to check out what you got cooking, where should they go? What should they do? Sure. Um, you can go to marketticket.com, two T's in a row, and uh, just click on Join Free. Hit us up in the chat room for uh, some chatting and some talking. I guess chatting and talking is the same thing, so, you know. Or, hey, come out and see us in person in Sonoma in uh, the middle of June and uh, go to our website to get information on that as well. Check them out, markettaker.com. While you're checking things out, keep checking out public.com. The folks at public liking what they're hearing from you folks. They've already extended their run on the network because they like you folks over there at OBC. So head on over to public.com, kick the tires and light the fires. Tell them we sent you. They'll be happy to hear that. Hey, it helps go a long way towards keeping this show available for you folks out there in your podcast device of choice like it has been since we talked in 2015 and even earlier about things like IRAs. It's been coming at you for a long time here on Options Bootcamp. Thanks to a lot of firms like Public for making that happen out there. Public.com, the place to go to learn more. We got to get on out of here, but don't fret, listeners. If you want more in your lives, you should be joining us on the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That's where Nichols and everybody else is hanging out because they get next week's episode right now. The rest of you have to wait until next week. So we see you then, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Check out public.com if you want to literally earn money to place options trades. There are no commissions or per contract fees. And public gives you a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. Discover why Nerd Wallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars. And start paying less than zero dollars to trade options. Only at public.com. Paid for by public investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider.
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs>